Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of my Cottage Core Let's Play Survival series. How are you doing today? I hope you're amazing and I hope you didn't miss me too much. The next project for today's video is working on the results from the community poll and building up some villager houses. Here in the flower forest, I actually chopped down some trees right before I started recording and I thought it would be a really cute idea to have three little huts here in this clearing. Another thing I just want to mention is that I finally found a skeleton spawner not that far away from my base while I was mining. I don't know if we'll have time to get to it today, but there it is way down there and earlier when I was trying to make a pathway down to it, well, this happened. I don't know why I was trying to ladder from the top. I should have just went to the bottom and laddered. I should have. And on the way, there's a huge amethyst geode, which is pretty cool. I am so happy to be back in this world again, and I am so, so ready to start doing all the things that we have to do today. The first of many tasks being grabbing some more nether wart, and you'll see why later. Also, please don't judge me that this is in the project board room. I had no other space. But I have been updating the project board with lots of ideas from all of you here on YouTube. So I just want to say thank you guys so much for all of the wonderful, wonderful ideas that we're gonna be working on during the time in the series. And before we mess with this guy, we're gonna have to go to the nether. Honestly, I think this might be the first time in my Minecraft career that I've gone to the nether with the intention of mining up netherrack. This should be interesting. Every time I see a skeleton with an enchanted bow, I'm like, I need one of those. And then I simply forget. Then when I got back, I started the painfully long process of rolling this villager to hopefully get some silk touch bugs. And before I trapped him, it was very, very annoying. At one point it became nighttime and he wouldn't do any more trades. So then I went and sheared all my sheep for something that we're going to be doing a little bit later. But then it was right back to actually breaking the lectern over and over and over again, hoping that one time we would be lucky enough to get silk touch. Finally, about 45 minutes later, the villager had the silk touch trade and I didn't even realize it was silk touch at first. I was about to break the lectern. Now we can start gathering materials by adding silk touch to our axe. And in my chest, I found a feather falling book, which I didn't even know I had. Might have saved my life earlier. Luckily, we have most of the stuff already that we need for this project, but we do need a bunch of red and brown mushroom blocks and we're gonna take the stems as well. I didn't even know you could bone meal mushrooms for the longest time and all you really need is a pod soul, so this was actually pretty easy. I thought I was gonna have to go to a dark oak forest. The last thing that we need to get really quick is some acacia. And look, I know what you're saying, frog. It's a horrible, horrible block, but listen, in Mizuno's, it's very, very pretty. Well, we won't be stripping it. We'll be using it in the plank form, okay? But listen, reserve your judgment until we use it. I brought over a chest full of materials that we can use to start building and I'm going to set my spawn really quick um, that way we can sleep and start clearing out some of these flowers. I am so excited to start building and I just want to jump right into it. This tree also has to go. I'm sorry. I'm sorry tree. Please, please go away. Now for the base of our villager houses, we're going to be using a circle and I'm going to make the outline of it with these acacia planks. It's going to be very simple, very small, very cute. Yeah, I think that's a good size. Next, we're going to be using the birch slabs to make this four tall total. So the one acacia and then the three birch. You know, I've been getting a lot of comments asking why I use slabs as opposed to full blocks. I just really like the Mizuno's feature that there are special textures that are really pretty for the double slabs. Mm, we need a doorway maybe a spot for a window yeah that looks good i like that i'm gonna use these red mushroom blocks to make a roof and around the entire little hut i'm gonna make an overhang by one on the outside at least to start with then we can come around here and finish this off and then i'm gonna fill in this part i don't know why we didn't fill that part earlier now it's time to shape the roof and I want there to be a window right in the middle. So I'm gonna go up by three on the sides of where the window would be. Then add one on either side just for a little bit of shape. And then in the diagonal go up by two and continue that all the way around. And we'll see how that looks when we are all done. For a little bit more shape, I'm gonna add a plank and then 
mushroom blocks on top of it. And then I'm gonna fill the entire roof at the top with the mushroom blocks. Technically, you can make this a little bit rounded on the top if you want to by adding a section in the middle. We're gonna do that on this one, but I'm not gonna make it too high just so that it stays kind of small to scale. Oops. Well, we can just replace, yeah, there we go. Now, playing with nether bricks, this is something that I normally do in survival. However, I really love the color of these nether bricks from the Mizuno's pack. Um, I think it would really make a nice chimney here, so we're gonna try it. And I like it, but it's a little bit too tall. Thankfully, we have silk touch on our axe, and we're gonna just remove some of this height and edit the way that it looks really quick. I think just a little bit shorter would be much, much better for the way it looks. I'm gonna try out birch trapdoors here. I don't normally use those, and maybe a wall. Yeah. Yeah, I think I really like this. I think it's looking really cool. And just gotta add the last one. There we go, perfect. Should probably sleep before it gets any later. Oh, wow, okay, perfect. That looks really cool, actually, I like it. Yeah, I really like it. Thankfully, we live in the flower forest, so we can get unlimited light gray stained glass, and that's what we're gonna be using for the windows in these. I really love this glass texture in Mizuno's as well. It's just so pretty. Now I'm gonna dig up the floor on the inside of the hut. And in this one in particular, I'm thinking of just a very light floor, kind of matching the walls. Maybe, maybe oak. Yeah, I think oak is gonna be probably the best bed here. Maybe a combination of planks and stripped. That is something I'd like to get better at in the course of this series is actually just making better flooring choices because I feel like I always go for the easy option, which is uh, stripped and regular planks. I can't help it though. It just looks so good. I really like it in this house as well. Okay, now out on the roof, we're going to add some leaves. And you know, you know my policy on leaves. We're just going to spam some leaves around. Not too many. We're, we're still wanting the main emphasis to be on the mushroom hut but enough to make this look a little bit overgrown and mystical. That, that's really the vibe that we wanna go for here. Oh yeah, I really like that. Really like that. And quickly add a door, I forgot. Perfect. The next two mushroom huts are gonna be in a time-lapse form just because you kind of get the idea of how I already built them. And like I said, I wanted to try out some different floorings. So I'm using some green glazed terracotta here. This is my favorite mushroom hut. It's a combination of spruce, mushroom stems, and then the brown mushroom block. And I just think it came out so, so nice. The specific mushroom to me is very, very cozy. It's very warm. It's the epitome of comfort builds in Minecraft. The next mushroom I wanted to make into a moss mushroom. So I used the same glazed terracotta on the bottom and the walls are made of smooth sandstone, which is really, really interesting because it is similar in texture and color, but just slightly different. I also made sure to add the chimney and bone meal the top of it as well to give it a little bit more of an overgrown vibe. Then I wanted to connect this new area to the main hobbit hole area and I had to do a little bit of terraforming. I also added a couple of basic gardens and some fencing with some lights to light up the pathway. And then to finish off this little time lapse, I added some mushrooms, traded with a wandering trader, and just really was happy with how this whole area is starting to come together. Honestly, it might be time to start adding wool farm to the top of our to-do list because it is getting very crowded over here. I just came over for some wool and I'm basically getting entity cram. But wool aside, I think I've got everything else that we need to start working on the interior of the mushrooms. And we're gonna jump right in. We're gonna start with the brown one first cause that's gonna be for the librarian villagers. And I really love this like bay window kind of thing that we've added. And I think I want the villagers to go on this wall here. Normally when I play with villagers and I make a trading hall, I usually make it underground because it's a little bit easier to trap them when you don't have to build around them. So making an aesthetic area for them is something that's kind of new to me. I normally just kind of shove them in a hole. I want something that fits the theme of the rest of the builds that we've done in this world so far, but maybe just slightly different. And I'm just going to be 100% honest with you. I think it was mostly that I hadn't played Minecraft in a couple of weeks because I was on holiday. Once I placed my trapdoors, I quickly realized that I did not have enough space for the villagers to be locked in somewhere. Chopping everything down, my beloved, and then rebuilding from the beginning. 
I didn't plan this design in here either in advance. I just kind of went with it and just tried to make something that I would like on the fly. And this is why I normally plan because I change my mind a million times. But the end result is something that I'm really, really happy with, even though it took me quite a while to get there. I won't lie though, this is kind of an awkward space to build in just because there's like a little indent part and there's a lot of heights, but you're not really sure how high you want to go and you don't want to cover a window. I think it's kind of underrated how hard the interiors are sometimes and they are something that I still want to get better at. In general, I'm pretty happy though after I add a little couch, maybe a, a bookshelf area and then some plants and some hanging storage. Those are all kind of my favorite things to add to an interior. Oh, and we cannot forget adding a flower pot with a sapling. I don't always slap down leaves everywhere inside these houses, but I think that in such a mystical kind of magical design, you have to you have to put a little bit. And after a couple of final details, this room is finally ready for a villager. But honestly, I swear, this was the longest part of this video. It was so frustrating. I had to take at least 400 breaks. If you guys follow my Twitch, you know that I usually do villager stuff in my hardcore worlds and it's never my favorite thing. But for some reason, I don't know why, it was just so annoying moving them from my base over into the flower forest and it's not even that far away. It was just the worst. Not the moving part. Although I could have used powered rails, I just used regular rails because I'm lazy. This was the worst part. Trying to get them into the little area that I made for them. For some reason, he kept teleporting out and then I was trying to get him back in the minecart. And usually he was good about getting back in the minecart, but then he kept teleporting out. And if the villager wasn't teleporting out of the spot, for some reason, he was just able to walk out from under the trapdoor, which I've never had happen where the trapdoor is in my entire time playing Minecraft. This was like attempt number five. He was running away back, I guess, to the hobbit hole. I don't know where he was going. After he went back inside, I closed off the door and then finally got him back in the minecart. And I really thought this time that I had him, I was going to block him off with the lectern and then break the cart. And then he just teleported over it. And then I was so annoyed that I was just placing blocks everywhere as I was pushing this man. And I was like, you are not getting out. No matter what happens, you're just not getting out. And finally, he was in. Mendington only went slightly faster. Um, he was still horrible to try to get in here. I don't know why I had so much trouble with these villagers. They were just doing things that villagers are never normally doing in any of my Minecraft worlds. I seriously cannot understate how long this took. It really took about two hours for two villagers. And after this, I stopped for the day. When I got back online, I started to play around with a carpet for this area. And I thought that the moss looked really cool. I actually really like how this entire thing came out. And then I wanted to add up at the top a little kind of chandelier, but I forgot chains, so I just used fences. It came out really cool. Okay, I'm finally done in this room and I'm going to quickly, well, maybe not so quickly, go to the other mushroom and move the villagers. I'm gonna pop back in once it's done, so see you in a moment. What felt like several years later. I'm still feeling the exact same way I felt before about villagers. They are so good, but they are so annoying. And thankfully the mushroom looks really cute, so let's go see it. Extra details on the front of the house and the little gardens out here are so adorable. And I just really like how this came out. This one has our cartographer villagers. And even though they're trapped in here, I wanted to add them like a little desk and a sleeping area. The bed is functional, even if it's a little bit weird. There's some storage in here for glass and emeralds. And the other mushroom is currently empty just because I don't have any more villagers and I was using it as storage for all of the stuff that I've been using in this area. The main hobbit hole is actually kind of full right now and doesn't have a lot of storage. So temporarily I may just use this area for storage instead of going to find more villagers. However, I was thinking ahead and I did add a couple extra spots for some mushrooms right here and over there. And the only thing I really want to do left in this area is this middle part, but I have no idea what to add there yet. So I'm going to think about it. Let me show you how the bed works. You can easily sleep and it's totally fine. And then 
<laughs> Your head is blocked so you wake up in such a weird spot. <laughs> it's just so funny looking. <laughs> Hi everyone. <laughs> I was thinking about adding a tree here, but I think instead I'm going to dig out the area for a pond. We haven't added any ponds into our world yet, and I like the idea of this area just being a clearing in the middle of the forest rather than having, you know, a ton of trees. I'm not the best pond builder out there, I'm not going to lie, but I'm just going to go with what feels right, and then we'll see how it looks at the end. Hopefully good. Okay, the basic shape is made from stone, but now I want to add some depth, so I'm going to add different heights inside of the pond. I want it to kind of flow downwards, and I'm going to do that by adding some full blocks, uh, slabs, and stairs. This is definitely a good start, though. We just need to shape it a bit more. If you do want to make your ponds in your own worlds, I would just say don't overdo the slabs. That way you can still bone meal the majority of the pond. And I don't like my ponds to have all stone, so I like to add in different varieties of mossy and regular cobble. And I do this both around the outline and on the interior of the pond as well. I just feel like it gives it a better look. It doesn't all look like the same block. With a very, very light hand in it, I'm going to also bring in some stone bricks just to make it look like at one point somebody was building this pond and then maybe it got kind of run down. I also like to use different blocks on the top, using stairs, slabs, buttons, things like that to kind of make a retaining wall on the outside of it. Of course, this is, would not be an overgrown frog build if it didn't have a bunch of leaves and flowers and everything else as well. And I think all of these pieces do something unique that bring a lot to the build all the way at the end. I've thought a lot about bringing CITs into this world for the small details, but I still haven't done it yet. I wonder what you guys are thinking. Would you like to see CITs in some of these builds? Oak fences, my beloved. Overgrown areas with broken down fences and lots of flowers and wildlife. Now that is a dream. And because we're playing in survival, we have to add tons of lights. So that way, you know, no creepers spawn. If a creeper blows this up, I will cry. Okay, and now maybe something that was a little bit worse than doing the villagers is filling the pond. In survival, you have to make sure that every single block is a source block, and this is going to take a while, so I'll see you guys in a moment. Finally putting in the last water buckets, and it's so beautiful. Just going to bone meal the bottom here a little bit and add some lanterns for light. Finishing touches on this area by adding some flowers and some grass. In this area, I really enjoyed matching up some tulips with some azure and some red rose bushes, filling up that hole, and then finally we're done. And you know, this episode is a perfect reminder to myself that even if I don't feel like I got a ton done, look at everything we accomplished in this episode. This area is absolutely breathtaking, and now I love that our villagers have their own place to live now, I think the mushroom huts are definitely just a step up from living underneath the stairs in my house. This area is just so full of life and beauty, and I think that there's only one last thing that I want to add before we end today. I'm also already thinking of new ideas for the other two mushrooms, maybe an amethyst mushroom, and possibly a prismarine one. But the last thing I want to add is just a little camping area with a campfire. Ah, oh, so, so cozy. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's episode and I hope you have a great rest of your day. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.